Japanese Sega Saturn games are still very collectible and you will save a lot of money when you compare them to their American versions. Stay tuned and I'll show you some of the games that I picked up over eight years of collecting games in Japan. I've been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra, and if you'd like to see exclusive videos about retro game hunting in Japan, you can head over to my Patreon. This video is actually the result of a poll that I held on Patreon a little while ago, and people voted for the Dreamcast and the Sega Saturn, so I'm going to be doing them both this month. Starting off with the Sega Saturn, I'm going to show off all of the games that I have, telling you a little bit about them, showing you some of the manuals. Here we've got Starfighter 3000. This is a very cheap game that I picked up as I was leaving Japan. I thought I saw it. It's like, oh, it looks like maybe it'd be a cool shooter. You know, although it's, 3D shooters are kind of rough, especially at this age. This was, I mean, this had to have been less than $5. Although what is really cool about this is this was actually sold with the Obi. So if you're not familiar, Japanese games, particularly in the 90s, and games for the Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation, anything that came in jewel cases like this, was sold originally with an Obi. Now the Obi... For cheap games like this, it's not going to be worth anything. But if, for example, like I've got Battle Garega here, this is about a $150 game in this condition without the Obi. If it had an Obi, it could be $200. It really depends on the rarity of the game. That determines how much the Obi will sort of cost. Now, there are some places like Sudugaya where the price is the same regardless of whether or not the game has the Obi or not. But if you go to a retailer like... Mandarake or Super Potato, the Obi will greatly affect the price in certain cases. So let's see here, Starfighter 3000, what can we expect out of this? I will admit to not having played this, that is a common theme for a bunch of these games. Oh, stickers! Is this a sticker? I think so. I don't want to mess with it, but that's, you get a lot of stickers in Japanese games. And while I don't think Starfighter 3000 is a very uh, sought after title, the fact that it's got a sticker, uh, that's a great A in my book. Nice little 3D shooter. The graphics do look pretty rough. That is the thing about the Sega Saturn is that it just wasn't that great in terms of 3D. It does have some of the best 2D sprites I think outside of the Neo Geo, it may even best the Neo Geo in certain cases. But its 2D cannot be matched. However, it's in the 3D department, it definitely got rolled by the PlayStation. Next up, we've got Chaos Control Remix. This is another 3D shooter, I want to say. Doesn't look like it's very scrolly. This is another game that I picked up as I was leaving Japan just because I wanted... I, I was like looking for like weird Sega Saturn games. I think there is still a lot of room on the Japanese Sega Saturn for games that qu haven't quite been discovered yet. Because some of these are just, they never came out in America, so you're only gonna find these if you actually like dug in and played through the library, which I don't think you can really even today expect people to have done. Oh wow, you can use the virtual gun with this. Oh man, and there's a, oh I forgot the mouse. You can actually use, there was a Sega Saturn mouse and keyboard that came out, which I think, did the Sega Saturn have online capability? I think it did a little bit, but I've never actually seen a way for you to connect your Sega Saturn. Because I remember the Dreamcast shipped with a modem installed with a with a uh, like a fifty six k modem. Or actually, no, in Japan it was like a it was a fourteen four modem, or it was one of those like it was the twenty eight point whatever modem. And then you actually had to upgrade to 56K. If I think that's true in Japan. I don't know about America. This is the Japanese version of Symphony of the Night. This Sega Saturn version only came out in Japan. It is very hard to find. It can be upwards of $200 now. I bought this for like 50 bucks from a hard off because you will tell it's a bit roughed up. You can see here it's missing one of the teeth that holds in the, the instruction manual. The instruction manual is very wavy. I think it's suffering from some water damage or it was very humid. It's still all together though. And it does, the Sega Saturn game plays a little bit worse than the PlayStation version. I would just recommend getting the PlayStation version. Although there is like a secret area. It's like a little area in the basement that is specific to the Saturn version. 
And that does help you when you're trying to like find, it's got some really good items and it also has uh, some enemies that give you experience quite quickly. So it, that's a little bit of a bonus, but I don't think it's worth the extra $150 that you'll be paying in order to play this. I would just go with the Sega, or sorry, with the PlayStation version. It is a cool as hell game though. I love having played both the PlayStation and the Saturn version. Look at that disc, great disc. And I love having the, the insert as the background instead of just the plain black that you'll often find for PlayStation and Sega Saturn games. Next up, we've got, uh, I forgot how to pronounce it, but it's like Maho Daisaksen Kingdom Grand Prix. I forgot how to say that. This is a rising aiding game that like combines vertically scrolling shooting with a racing game. I actually don't like it that much. I wish I liked this game more. The artwork's really cool. The graphics are great, but it just doesn't hit me in the way that I felt like it should. Not like some of the games that actually, I'm looking at them on the stacks of games that I have right now, and I'm gonna get to those next. I'll tell you the games that I really love. By the same company, actually, that it's it's fine. It's a fine game. It's 60 bucks now. It's, if you're into sh scrolling shooters, sure, go ahead but I would not put this at sort of like the best in class as I would for actually the next game that I'm going to pick up. Put this aside. Here we go. This is Sokyu Gurentai. This is Terra Diver for the Sega Saturn. This just hits me on every level. It's got the graphics. It's got the gameplay. It's got the soundtrack. It is just... It's phenomenal in every possible way. And I'm so lucky to have found this. I found this at a hard off in Saga Prefecture in like the south of Japan. And someone, I think they had just like traded in either there or someone, someone in their families, something happened. I don't know what happened, but they had traded in a Sega Saturn collection. I'm being very careful because it was like 10 games mint. And I really don't want to mess this up. It's really hard to get out the manual for these. Get out of this lip here. There we go. Yeah. Terra Diver. It, it's like if I wanted to tell you what my vision of, of like a sci-fi anime future Japan was going to look like, it is the world of Terra Diver. It is so cool. And I have played this many times and I'm ready to play it again. I'd love to stream this one day just because of how good it is. It is so fun. And it's another, um, well, it says EA, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, no, it's a, it's an aiding joint. They made, Rising and Aiding made so many good shooters. I put the Obi away. The Obi, this isn't actually, I mean, even today, I think there's a PlayStation version out there. It's not terribly expensive. I, I cannot recommend this game enough. It is one of my favorite games for the Sega Saturn. Next, we have Gunbird. This is a Psycho shooter for the Sega Saturn. Also came out for the PlayStation. Uh, published by Atlas, but developed by the studio Psycho. They made a lot of shooters. Uh, one of the big ones is like Aero Fighters, which is Sonic Wings in Japan. This is, they seem to have made virtually the, like the same shooter 20 different times, but they spice it up a little bit just to make it fun each of those times. I highly recommend Gunbird. If you were going to play this game, oh, I think this is another part of that collection that I bought from Hard Off. This is on the Psycho Shooting Collection that released, I think it's on like the Bravo, whatever the second episode was. It comes with Gunbird 1 and 2. That I That is probably going to be the best way to play this game. And it's always that bottom. The bottom always sticks. There we go. Got to be very careful. There we go. And pull it out. This is a great game. It's got some, it's got really funny characters. It's got a great story to it that's always fun to, to watch as you're playing the game. It really integrates the villains with the level design and it's just so fun to play. Oh, what is this? Illustration gallery list. What is this? Uh, this is from an illust, like a contest that they held, but I don't see, I, I, I don't see what the winner was. Why? What? Okay. Oh, and it's got the Hagaki. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Here's the villains. Oh, you got Rouge, C Claude, what? C Kurodo, and Ace. These are so great. I, I love this game. Uh, Gunbird 2 is okay. It's, it's, I think that came out for the Dreamcast. Gun, it's all right, but Gunbird 1, I think, really has a special place in my heart. So let's put you in there. All right. There's the disc. 
Actually, and another thing I really want to do, something that I might that might be worth doing for all of my Saturn games is, ch is checking for disc rot. And I will say my Sega Saturn games have held up quite well compared to my Dreamcast games. <laughs> or no, not Dreamcast. Dreamcast is fine. I mean GameCube, which I often see. I often see the GameCube as the successor to the Dreamcast. Here we go. Dodonpachi. This is the sequel to Donpachi, which we'll get to in a second. This is a... Again, published by Atlas, but actually developed by Cave, I'm pretty sure. Is Cave the one, are they the ones responsible for um, Batsugun? That's sort of like the beginning of the bullet hell shooting genre. Dodonpachi is another, it's a great game. I love playing this. It's just, it's being able to choose between the multi-shot or like the focus blast on top of the bombs. Oh, it's so good. Very playable even today. I love I love busting this out every once in a while. Whenever I whenever I'm playing the Saturn, even if I'm playing other games, I will very often once uh, get out the shooters, including Doton Pachi. Uh, I think Pachi is also Hachi is how you say uh, B in Japanese, and then Doton Pachi is just like it turns into a P for like phonetic reasons or whatever. Then we get the one that started it all. Here we've got Don Pachi. This came out. When did this come out? Was it like nine? No, ninety five. So when did I guess this was 97. So this came out in 96. I guess 95 is the arcade copyright. This I actually bought. I have a weird memory of this. I bought this at a hard off near Mount Fuji. It was like 40 bucks. And I thought, why not? I love the Donpachi series. So I picked up the original. And let's get this. Because I remember, yeah, my parents were visiting Japan. And I decided to go. We had rented a car. So one day I just drove around. Uh, the prefecture surrounding Mount Fuji and ended up finding this at one of the hard offs there. They also had a, the, the, what is it, the Iron Warrior or the Steel Legion? I can't remember that one game that has that giant controller that's like a sort of like, it looks like an aircraft. It looks like the cockpit of a jet fighter and you use it to control a mobile suit. I didn't buy it, but it was only like 40 bucks and I kind of wish I had uh, because that's like $200 now. Here you got the, the Donpachi. The little B antenna here, very understated design, and a great game. Still holds up. Don't Pachi, Don't Pachi, both are great and recommend. Here we've got Rockman X4. For some reason, I saw this at a book off for like two hundred dollars, but I think they had mislabeled it. You shouldn't spend more than twenty or thirty bucks on this game. It is the it is a port. I think the PlayStation version is probably better, but. It's fine. It's a good game. I enjoyed playing it. I don't think I've ever even... I, I, I've never traditionally beat a Mega Man game, and the X-Series is included in that. I've had to use save states just because once you get to, like, the last few levels, it's like, man, I cannot deal with just, you know, going through those levels again and again and again to try and get to the boss. If I can beat it once, that that's enough for me. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a little... Uh, yeah, it's a, just a little introduction for, I guess, the person who sang the the introductory song. Oh, yeah, the opening theme and the ending theme. One more chance, and what is that? Makenai ai ga kito aru. I definitely have a love that cannot lose. I should warn it. 79. Wow, okay. That's I love I love also those little details from Japanese games that we just did not get in their American versions. Like, I remember seeing, like, advertisements for, like, some, like, Capcom CDs in some other games, but this is like great CD design. I, you know, I really hope these don't rot away. I hope these, I want these to last forever because they're just so cool and we're never gonna see them again. Next up, we've got Strikers 1945, a phenomenal game. I've said it in previous videos, but one of my favorite aesthetics is World War II era shooters. And especially when they give them the little like sci-fi touch that you see in Strikers 1945. There's also Strikers 1945 2 that I think is the better version of the game. It's just got slightly better graphics and the challenge is a little bit more appreciable. Strikers 1945 is still a great game that I would recommend. I would, however, recommend getting the either the Astro City or the original arcade stick that, sh um, that they made for the... Sega Saturn, that's really the way you're going to want to play this game, not with a regular controller. But look, you know, we, although they're very cheap, I think you can find them in hard off for like $5. You're not always going to have that available to you, especially because those controllers, they're hell, they're hell to ship. And they're also just so bulky that I'm having a problem even today figuring out how I'm supposed to store all of my arcade sticks. But it's sometimes worth it if you can play these kinds of games. 
Next up, we have Dragon Force. This is a really, really expensive game in America, but even today you can get it either on eBay for probably about 20 bucks, maybe a little bit more, or if you're in Japan, it's like a $10 game, Dragon Force. And I think this is like, I remember going through this earlier, and it's a one disc game. Like, it's crazy that they shipped it in this huge box, but let's find out why. So, okay, we've got the OB here. So there's the CD. Looks great, looks in good condition. We've got the OB here, and then we've got the manual. Is this just gonna be? Why is it? So... Why is the box shipped in the two man... the two disc box? Dragon Force. It's like an RTS simulator. It's a real time strategy game. What is this? Look at these inserts. What is this? Uh, a ri... Dragon Force original soundtrack, and then what is this? Dragon Force, something, something, GM Progress 7, Super 3D EXP, number 7. I don't know what this is. Oh, it's an um, MGCD? I don't know what that is. What does that mean? I don't know. That's weird. I've never seen that before. I don't know what that means. Here we've got the Hagaki. Oh, I see. Yeah, I guess if you're not familiar with this, if this is your first time seeing something like this, the Hagaki is a postcard that was included with most games that were made in Japan throughout the 80s and 90s. And this is something that you, it was a survey that you filled out. And if you sent it in, you could be entered to win a prize or you got sometimes like you got points in a club. There were all different kinds of rewards. I remember when I was opening up Fire Emblem, they had game, or you could choose to win, possibly win, either a strategy guide or a deck of Mario cards. What is this? Oh, is this more Dragon Force stuff? Dark Saber, Eazu Adobencha. What is this? Kuraimaksu. What is it? Oh, Dark Saber. These are games. Okay. <laughs> These are advertisements for games. Oh, wow, yeah, the original advertisement for Panzer Dragoon Zwei. Soft Information Volume 6. Wow, if you really want to tie the game to the period. These are all of the games that they're trying to push for the Sega Saturn. What is this? Albert Odyssey Gaiden 4. Rinkuru Riba Story. Gun Griffin the Eurasian, Conf Eurasian Conflict. Gulliver Boy. Dragon Force is even, yeah, Dragon Force, not top billing though, but this originally sold for 5,800 yen. We've got Gameware, oh, that's a magazine, or no, Game, Gameware, oh, that's a, yeah, that's a magazine. Then we've got, oh, the King of Fighters 95, poured, yeah, ported to the Sega Saturn. Then what is this? G oh, Jiko no Kangairu Soccer. Jiko was, I think, some big, I know, one of the name, one of the games he's attached to for the Super Famicom is legendarily known as Akuso Gay, a really bad game, uh, but I've not played it myself. Here we go, Lupin the Third, Kitchen Stadium Tour. Oh, Iron Chef! Wow! And then Wheel of Fortune, the best bout, Virtual Fighter, multimedia video CD. Fascinating, fascinating. That is a real trip back to the year 1996. And I don't even think there's anything else because normally there would be a disc here, but it, no, actually, oh, the map, the map, that's why. Here we go. This is the Dragon Force map. The Continent of Legendra. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. Izumo, Fandalia, T-Pars, <laughs> Tristan, that's some weird, Tradnoa, Bozak. Really? <laughs> You thought these were good names for places? Then what's on the other side? Oh, it's a little uh, skill set and tells you what type each thing is. That's awesome. That's cool. That's why you gotta love these old games. So it's been 20 minutes. I've still got a whole other stack of games that I have to show you. This has just been the first episode of what will probably be two of my Sega Saturn games. This was made possible by a poll that I posted to Patreon. If you would like to join my Patreon at $5 a month, you will be able to see an exclusive Japanese retro game hunting video 
You will also have access to polls even at the $1 level and above. Go check it out. I offer a few different services on my Patreon. I hope you will go over there. And if you would like to, you can support the channel and vote for future channel focuses. I have been your man out of Japan, Jay Contra. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And mahalo.